What's up guys, Rich FPV here. It's Tuesday, it's time to talk about tech, and today I've got something that's really special. I've been waiting a long time for Betaflight 4.0, release candidate one, and now it's out. You can try it on your quad. Today, we're gonna try to fix an old rusty quad I could never really get tuned very well. We're gonna see if we can get the prop washed out, we're gonna see if we can get the vibes out, and just see how well it feels. But first, for reference, I'm gonna show you some footage from Quad Camp race day quads up in Orlando a few weeks ago. This is a good example of what this quad flies like right now. Just so you know what we're trying to tune. It's not terrible, I'm gonna be honest, but it's just not up to my standard. But yeah, I don't like vibrations, I don't like prop wash. I like this thing smooth, buttery, but tight at the same time. So uh, yeah, here's some footage for what it looks like and then we're gonna get to installing and tuning this thing and then we're gonna go for a fly. So yeah, definitely not terrible, but there is some room for improvement, and I could just never get it tuned any better than this with all of the tools and all of my knowledge. I just couldn't quite get it right. So I don't know what to attribute that to, but we're gonna try the RPM filter, and we're gonna try Betaflight 4, and we're gonna try BL Heli 32, the new test firmware, and we're just gonna see you know, what all these things equate to. So here's the quad we are going to do the upgrade on today. This is the TBS Source 1 frame. It's got the Holy Bro Kakut Kakute F4 V2, Tico 32 ESCs, and Hype Train Blasters. So that's the setup. Let's go ahead and get it plugged in here. All right, and we're gonna start up BL Heli Suite 32. All right, so we'll go ahead and connect and read setup. And as you can see, I flashed 32.67 on each of these ESCs. And also what's interesting is ESC number four is actually a different ESC. This is the F3 Tico 32, and these are all the non-F3 Ray 32, Tico 32s. I don't know, same thing, same firmware. Um, but that's just an example of the fact that you can run different ESCs. It's really just new firmware. Um, yeah, everything will work fine. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole process of updating this firmware again because I already did it and there are plenty of other examples on how to do that. But basically you just have to flash each one individually. And uh, yeah, the only things I've changed here really are the motor direction on a couple of them. I think two and three are reversed. Yeah, three is reversed, four is normal. And then I've also set my PWM frequency of 48 kilohertz on all four ESCs. And that's all you have to do to the ESCs. Make sure you have 3267. Make sure you have your motor directions correct because after you flash your firmware, it's gonna erase everything. I think there is an option where you can restore the previous settings. But uh, lastly, make sure music is off. You can't run the, uh, the reverse D-shot or whatever it is with any music loaded on any of your ESC. So make sure you go in and disable any music that you may have. So once that's done, we can go on over here to Betaflight Configurator and connect. And you can see that we are on Betaflight 4.0. If you need to flash, you just activate your bootloader and then you can go into here, choose release and release candidates, choose your board, as far as I know, this only works on F4 boards and only a certain few right now, but uh, that could be wrong by the time you're watching this. But choose your board, choose 4.0.0 RC1, and then just flash as you normally would. And then you're going to go to this page. This is on GitHub. I think you can probably just Google this right here, bidirectional D-shot and RPM filter. And this is gonna give you all the instructions on how to actually do this. I highly suggest you, you scrutinize these, go through. There's a lot of little uh, weird things, like you definitely need to check your motor RPMs. You definitely need to check that your gyro is operating at the correct frequency. Um, definitely set up your debug mode so you can do some black box filtering 
or some black box logs and make sure that everything's working correctly. And for general tuning and debugging. And uh, yeah, so here's the list of supported targets right now. Um, it looks like there are a few F7s in here, but not the F7 that I normally run. So we're just trying it out on this one. Others are working fine for now. I'm not that worried about it. Um, and then here is instructions and a link to the new BL Heli 32 firmware. So once you've got all that loaded on, set up, make sure you erase all your settings on your flight controller, right? Don't try to, don't try to just paste in a diff from your previous setup. And then once you get all your modes set up and your rates, leave your PIDs alone, okay? Just leave your PIDs alone. Set up your rates though, set up your OSD, set up your modes, and uh, then go in and find your flight controller, like mine is Kakut F4 V2, and there's going to be a little snippet here. And this, you're just going to paste this into your CLI, and this is going to set up everything needed for the uh, RPM filter. Yeah, once this is in, you're going to go to your motors tab. You're going, I'm not going to do it because uh, obviously I have props on and I don't feel like taking them off, but you're going to plug in your battery. You're going to spin up your motors. You're going to go here. You're going to spin up your motors just a little bit, you know, just so they're idle, okay? Leave it running. Go over to your CLI and type status. Now, when you do that, you're going to see D-Shot RPM, motor 1, motor 2, motor 3, motor 0. Motor 0 is actually 1. That's just programming index. And you're going to actually have an RPM number here. And that RPM number is reported through the D-Shot protocol back to the flight controller. And then that's going to be used to feed into the PID loop and the filter loops. And it's going to be able to filter more effectively. I don't know all the details of it, but that's the theory anyways. So once you have your motors running and you go to CLI and you type status, you're going to actually see these running. So then you can just go back and disconnect whatever your motors are going to shut off, kill your battery. You should be good to go for a test flight. Now, I suggest doing a quick line of sight hover, make sure it's working, do a couple quick line of sight maneuvers, and uh, don't just go ballistic with it at first. But uh, yeah, like I said, since I've got all that already done, we're going to head outside and we're going to see how this thing flies. I did do a quick hover and stuff, but uh, I haven't actually flown it aggressively by any means. Uh, so let's go check it out. All right, let's go ahead and get this RPM filter tested. Plug in here. Now again, this quad, I hesitantly say that this quad was virtually unflyable before because it was totally flyable, but it just wasn't up to my cinematic standards for the type of flying that I do. So uh, let's see what it looks like with this fancy RPM filter. So right off the bat, I can tell that it sounds different. It sounds like whinier, like higher pitched and clean. Let's see if we can get some prop loss. Wow. Oh my gosh. There's like nothing. Holy crap. Oh my god, I cannot believe it. Prop wash is almost non-existent. I cannot believe this. Now see, it sounded like there was some prop wash there, but it didn't really look like it. So that's interesting. Let's uh, see if the motors are warm or cool or what. They're a little warm, not gonna lie. Not hot. I'm comfortable with flying them like this. I don't know that I would want to fly on bad props with them that warm though. All right, let's do another little, let's just do some hovering and stuff. All right, so I like to hover right here and I can usually tell really easily if there's any like vibrations. Looks pretty good. Let's do some punch outs.
Wow. I cannot believe this. This thing is flying so good now. Oh, that was a little strange. Let's see if if I feel comfortable maneuvering it. Yeah, feels good. Okay, so a few things to consider here. Uh, this is on default everything, right? There's no tuning at all. Like, so I'm sure with a little additional tuning, we can get it even further refined. Uh, but I don't think, I, I really don't feel like ripping around in my front yard doing this thing justice. So what do you say we hop in the car and head on over to the club field and put a few laps in, see what happens. All right, this is the UTT one track, I believe. I usually run about 19 to 20 second is my average. Um, keep in mind, I'm not a racer and this is not a racing drone. This is totally a freestyle drone with very low pitch uh, props on it. So see what we can do. between the quad cam footage and what you just saw at the track? I thought so. I really think this is the future of beta flight here. This is, this is a really big step forward for open source flight controller software. And uh, I'm really excited about the actual release of beta flight 4. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know in the comments what you experienced if you tried this. And uh, yeah, until next time, happy flying. Oh,